story and I'm a real alcoholic and addict. And uh, by the grace of a loving God and a lot of prayer and meditation, I am here today. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, um, I, uh, speaking is uh, something that I really um, uh, have to kind of warm up to. I, uh, people that know me uh, know that I'm really not a social uh, butterfly. I'm, I'm, I'm just not. But when people see me outside of my, uh, you know, when I'm out at the conventions or the meetings, I got this smile and everything. And, and they're like, wow, she's so sociable. She's a social butterfly. And I believe my sponsor or my, uh, some of my sponsee sisters in there, they start laughing. They like, they just don't know what it takes for you to get out of the house. Uh, takes a lot of prayer and meditation for me to get out of the house, for me to even just get on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, I like to be uh, out of the way. Uh, I think, I, I, I wanna say Carl, Carl M said, I'm, I'm a scream looking, I feel, always feel like a scream looking for a mouth. You know, uh, I'm really comfortable with them, my own skin. I, I just found out that I was introverted and, uh, and that's okay. There are some people that are that way uh, once they get inside. So there you have it. So uh, I'd like to thank you, Teresa, for inviting me uh, here. Uh, I am pure alcoholic. Uh, and and uh, I forget this a meeting, but I, I had a lot of uh, involved got a lot involved in a lot of party favors, so let's just say that, okay? And uh, that, uh, but that alcohol, let me tell you, that alcohol is something else. So let me just give you a rundown before I even knew how to pray and everything, and then I'll lead you up into the prayer and meditation. I I grew up in church, uh, meaning uh, uh, my grandfather uh, was a minister. Uh, on, on both sides and my uh, grandmothers uh, were uh, Jesus's, um, one had to be his mother and the other one must have been his sister. Um, I don't know, they were um, uh, as spiritual as they come, as religious, let me tell you that, they were very religious. And uh, through their religion, I thought that was spirituality. So I tried to be them and, and uh, at least to try to be my grandmothers, uh, uh, but it was really my grandfather that set the tone for my life with his spirituality along with the religion. Uh, I came up in a time of uh, severe civil unrest. Uh, I know, you know, I look maybe uh, <clears throat> 30, 40, 57 at least. Uh, <laughs> well, all right, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, uh, but they, no, okay, I forgot this on this program. Uh, I'm 65 years old and in a couple of months I'll be 66. So I came up in a time of civil unrest. So I saw a lot of things, but I had a lot of hope. And, uh, and it was because of my grandfather. But so I went to church six days a week. Uh, on the seventh day, I was cleaning it. And that's all I did for the most part until, you know, uh, the uh, racism and everything was really rampant in. Uh, Alabama. So my mother just loaded up the truck and we moved on up here to Beverly um, Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars, right? Uh, but there was a time uh, here that I found out the real truth. In the South, you know what people think. There is not a doubt in your mind what people think. And in California, uh, you just don't know un until you know, you know, because it just looks different. Uh, and so, you know, I, I didn't know that, uh, I knew the hatred of the South, but I thought my mother was moving us up North because we wouldn't experience that. But I experienced more racism and prejudice in Cal California than I ever had in my life. Uh, I don't know the, uh, uh, Zoom doesn't do us real uh, justice. Um, so it, it shows a little light plus the lighting uh, we have here, but I'm of the, the, the super darker persuasion, you know, there's no, no light skin going on. Um, and so uh, to, uh, uh, and, and I love me, let's not let me make, make you assure that, 
Uh, but in the races, there is a lot of, uh, in, within the black race, there's a lot of racism, light skin, black, long hair, short hair, nappy, whatever. So anyway, I, but I was still cool. I was still cool. I've kind of found out, you know, I played the first string violin. I, you know, sang in the choir when we got to California, you know, I was a good little girl, you know, I was a good little church girl. And uh, my teacher, uh, I, I, I was really smart. I went to school overseas because my grand, my father was in the service. And so by the time I came to California, I was third or fourth grade and I was kind of excelled, you know, I knew handwriting and all this kind of stuff. And my teacher walked by and she called me and you guys, I don't want to offend anybody because this is my story. Uh, she walked past me and she told me, you're an uppity little nigger, aren't you? And I like, yes, ma'am. You know, in, in, <laughs> <laughs> tell you I was a dumb door too. You 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 see that already, right? Uh, in Alabama, you're colored or Negro. On my birth certificate, it says Negro. There was no, uh, uh, I guess, the slang nigga, you know. So I wasn't hip to that. I that it didn't sound like nothing I had ever heard. You know, he was always Negro or colored. So I thought I had been complimented, and so I ran home and I, you know, I was almost singing a song, you know. Uh, I'm a little nigger, you know, and, and I and I told my mother, I said, what happened at school today? And I told her, and, and I'm like, at that time, she just, she kind of spun around like the Tasmanian devil, and uh, and I'm looking at her, and the next thing, you know, there was no ACLU, but there was in, uh, there was an NAACP, and uh, so I just want to uh, go, let me go back a little bit. Uh, my uh, grandfather and Dr. Martin Luther King were really good friends. There wasn't uh, you know, he was really famous to everybody else, but there were many times in Alabama that I sat at the feet of this man or in the same room just being a little kid. And so uh, I didn't know Doc was as famous as he was until he got killed. And I like uh, would, you know, because I thought everybody was a freedom fighter. I thought everybody wanted freedom, but it, that really wasn't the truth. And I had been up in California away from the stuff and, and got a little fast and you know, uh, when I came to California, I looked country. I had um, <laughs> I had these two little, um, I got my brother, I had these two little um, uh, plaits, they call them plaits, they, you know, braids now, you know, but they was plaits and, and they kind of hung and it's like a little horns, you know, and, <clears throat> but I, I didn't know it was just strange. I had these little bangs that went down to here when you, pulled them the curl out but the curl was so tight but you know so I I, I got made fun of by uh, the people in California just need to say it needlessly so anyway the day that my teacher called me that the next day the NAACP my 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 grandfather and them was uh, oh it was just a big mess uh, that was in 1964. I should have been in some Al-Anon, some Alcoholics Anonymous program then because instantly I felt different. I felt different. I didn't, I didn't feel uh, a part of, I didn't feel a part of. And from that day till I got into the fellowship, I always felt like a scream. And, and Carl, I never forget him saying it. It just made it so so simple for me, I, I felt like a scream looking for a mouth. It was just always high anxiety and everything. And so uh, alcohol, oh, alcohol. Uh, I, I granted alcohol because alcohol uh, did for me what I couldn't do for myself. For the most part, um, alcohol allowed me to get on a table and dance naked. Uh-huh. And uh, I shouldn't have been dancing naked uh, then or even now, uh, but alcohol tells you that you get up here and you let them see what you're working with. And I wasn't this, I, you know, back in those days, I wasn't this voluptuous beauty like you see now, you know, I was more like a little bobblehead, you know, and so, um, and, and I, I didn't have rhythm, I, you know, I didn't, you know, I could dance in a chair, but when I got alcohol, and, and I, I don't know how I would ever get from the, the chair to the table, but it happened every time, and it happened from the first time that I had a drink, and it was just fun. Everybody was talking about the fun we had, and I like, yeah, 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 but I didn't know that I had gone into doing some things um, 
uh, off of alcohol that I didn't remember. I'm talking in seventh grade. Now I, I, now, I haven't got there yet. I'm just talking seventh grade. Um, anywhere on the bleachers, anywhere that there was um, some alcohol, I was, I was, uh, I was your girl. Uh, they had some songs come out some in the '90s, like a "Round the Way Girl." That that was me. That was me. Um, round the way, round your way, around uh, and get in anybody's way uh, off of uh, <laughs> alcohol. So that went on for some years. I, I landed in some big trouble, uh, very big trouble. Uh, by the time I was 18 years old, I was on my way to state prison for armed robbery and murder. And I didn't even uh, have a clue of uh, really what had gone on. Uh, it wasn't that important to me. It was just something that had happened, uh, I guess. Uh, I was sitting there looking stupid, but my dad had a good friend and uh, I don't, I don't wanna seem like a name dropper, but uh, Johnny Cochran and my dad were really good friends. They grew up together. So thanks to Johnny Cochran, I, uh, did an observation. They lost me in prison for about a year. So I ended up spending probably about three years uh, before I went back to court and got out. Now you would think 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, you would go somewhere and sit down. Go somewhere and sit down because you've learned your lesson. This is not where you come from. Uh, yeah. Now I had a lot of prayer uh, going through trial that's my first bout of prayer, pinch hitting prayer. Uh, God, now you know I don't, I'm a good girl. I just got caught up with some people. But if you see me through this, oh, I got real holy. I used to be real holy. I could walk the floor and preach. I don't do all that now, but I, I was praying and, and it just seemed like uh, that God was working in my favor because, you know, I had got in tune with him. You know, every time my grandmother visited and, and I was talking scripture and everything and just, you know, walking around the unit like I was the, you know, uh, 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 the Pope of prison. Um, I, I don't want to say Mother Teresa because um, I, I was doing some things in prison that I had no business doing like uh, drinking. They make liquor so I you know but you know when I wasn't drinking and I only drank because the bible said you know for municipal, municipal purposes so I didn't get drunk and you know I would I would be the taster and that would be it so I you know I had to I could control myself so liquor hadn't was not my problem so when I got out um I got out and I uh, moved uh, to Pomona where I'm at my brother said come here they're going to kill you and uh, I drank I drank uh, alcoholically. I did everything alcoholically and it was never good. It never looked good. It never even felt good. But because I had gotten uh, this disease and the effect produced turned me on more than anything else. And so that's, that's where I ended. And uh, you know, one thing led to another, in and out of here, in and out of there, uh, uh, you with you, with them, with anybody. It didn't matter where I woke up. It uh, didn't matter who I was with. You know, uh, I'm one of those, I have the nerve to be bougie when I'm drinking, you know, uh, tabletop and all. Uh, but the next morning afterwards, I'm, I am super bougie. I'm like, oh my God, who are you? You know. Uh, you, you, I, I know there's nobody else that does this like this, you know, uh, and the, the, uh, the person is absolutely in love with me, in love with me because we had made some, uh, we, had, we had made some promises. And uh, so uh, it was marrying time the next day and, uh, but it was uh, scootaloo time for me, I don't know. You know, and that went on, on, and on, and on. And I like to frequent uh, where there's uh, alcohol and tables, and those are bars. Um, so I, I frequent those a lot, and I do the same thing. And not after, you know, one drink, you know, my head starts to spin. Second drink, and I don't drink little shots. I usually have to have at least a half pint in a cup. Um, 
you know, one turns my, you know, my soul on and the second one turns my feet on. And uh, my feet go from the chair and I don't care what size chair it is. It could be seven feet tall. I got to get on top of the chair to get on top of the table. And I must have a dress on, must have a dress on so I can dance and let you see what I'm working with. Um, sounds like a, you know, I've been, you know, you, you try to be all nice and stuff, but you know, I was a prostitute. Let's just go on and say it, you know, I done got sober now all of a sudden want to be all sanctified in glory. I was a hoe, right? And I like being a hoe. I like being drunk. And then the next day, I don't know you. And that just went on for years, you know, but then I want to walk around when I'm sober, looking like uh, the bishop's wife, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm part of these organizations. I'm an elk member and, you know, I, uh, you know, I had these sashes and these fezzes on. And when I walk into, you know, uh, uh, the Elks Lodge, you know, they're the Laurel daughter ruler or the granddaughter ruler. I'm, I'm somebody, but let me take a drink. And I'm not supposed to drink at the bar with my sash and regalia on. And there I was. You know, uh, many times they had to say, daughter, you can't do that. And I would be up on top of the bar, climbed up on the stool, on the bar, dancing. You know, I got sash going around, you know, and they're like, oh, my God, you know. Uh, and so I've had, had many talks of, about uh, uh, alcohol. Like all of us, you should not do that. What about the kids? Fraught their emotional pills, you know. You ought to straighten up. What's wrong with you? Like, nothing wrong with me. What's wrong with you? You know. Uh, so uh, April 3rd, 1999, I had my last drink. And I had started drinking uh, the, the fine wines, you know, the Hennessy's and everything. But uh, when I finished, I was uh, drinking the finest wine there was that was a... Uh, uh, Mad Dog 2020, uh, two for one Cobras, uh, two for one Magnums. They're a dollar and 23 cents. And you can look in anybody's couch and get that much and go and get your drink. And uh, so that's what happened. And thank God I have a brother in this fellowship that used to bring me to the little meetings to see you guys, you know, and I would grace you with my presence, you know, like, haha, <laughs> you know. Too bad you're here. Good luck for you, you know, you know. Uh, and, and then April 4th, I walked into the meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous with the rest of you sots, realizing I was the queen of sots. I believe that my prayer and meditation started right there. I didn't know it because I didn't know how to keep a drink without this going on. I didn't, I didn't know how to keep a drink out of my hand without feeling that you were looking at me, uh, that there was something wrong and pulling my clothes and I got to go to the bathroom because I'm just this, I'm just this high anxiety. It's just way too much, too, too much for me. And, uh, so I got involved in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous because they said, you know, you know, you have to get a sponsor. And you, you know, you know, it's something about when you knew you had a nerve to be offended when somebody asked you to get a sponsor. But my first sponsor gave me a drink. Gave me a drink. And my first sponsor said, don't water it down because you won't get the effect. And I didn't. And I drank just like I was told to drink. But you asked me to get a sponsor. The devil is a lie. I don't need no sponsor. I don't need nobody to take care of me in no fellowship. And they like, take care of you. I'm like, yeah, that's what a sponsor is, isn't it? They said, a sponsor is going to take you through the big book. I said, I don't need nobody to take me through no book I can read. I've been to college. Right? Biggest liar in the world. I had only had taken some college courses. Biggest liar in the world. Just biggest liar. Uh, but I didn't want you to think bad of me. 
I didn't know when you, when the newcomers came in the room, for the most part, you felt you were like, oh, please don't go back out. Please stay, you know, especially when you, you know, you, you know, uh, you, you see us, you know, we know new people, but new people don't know that we know that they're new. So I was like that. I was like, you know, sitting up there like I had, uh, you know, I remember a, a speaker, 12 years sober, and, and she was carrying a message. And I was sitting up there with maybe 27 days looking at her with contempt. I thought to myself, look at this, look at this sad heifer here. My God, look at her shoes. Jesus, there's a bunch of bombs here. I'm like, oh my God. I told my brother, What's, what do you got me? Where do you have me? You're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I don't need all this. I, I got to go. And he says, after the meeting, I'm like, okay. And I went home on my way home. I didn't go down the main drag. I went, I went the back way. That was April 4th, 1999. I prayed. God, please. I don't want to drink. I don't ever want to drink again. They said, oh, I have to. I said, and if you're there, like I've been hearing all these years, it's only going to be through you that I will not drink. And so I went home that day, that night, got up and uh, got myself together, called my ex-employer because I had walked off the job drunk a year before. I, I was a hairdresser, I managed 12 Fantastic Sam's for nine years, nine Fantastic Sam's for 12 years. And I asked him, could I have my job back? And he said, sure. I went back, I went to work and he said, what happened? And I told him, I says, you know, uh, nothing happened. I, I had I was just tripping. He thought I was really eccentric. He didn't know I had been drunk all along. And I asked him, could I have my job back? And he said, yeah. He said, are you ready to get back into management? I said, no, not yet. A few months later, I told him that I had an alcoholic problem and that I uh, was now involved in AA and I was uh, making amends to him. Before I made that amends, I prayed for like three weeks nonstop. And the prayer simply went, God, if you're there, like they say, I need to make an amends to this man. Because so I went through the work. As soon as I got, I got a sponsor on 20, 27 day, uh, day 30, I had a sponsor. Day 31, I had a sponsor. And I'll tell you the reason why I had a sponsor, because at 30 days sober, I had wrote on a legal tablet uh, I was going to thank everybody that I had met by name, uh, you know, like I was taking an Academy Award and uh, uh, I was sitting there with my brother and I pulled it out of my, uh, you know, precious and I told him here, take a look at this. And he said, what is this? I said, it's my speech. And he said, well, for what? I said, I got to thank everybody here. He said, for what? I said, I'm 30 days sober. He like, what? I said, yeah, take a look at that. And uh, he unfolded it and it was, it was folded like I was schizophrenic. It was, um, it was written pretty much like I was schizophrenic. It was on a tablet and I wrote on the side and everything because I needed to make sure that I named everybody that had been, that had smiled at me because all you had to do was smile at me. You made me feel welcome like I had never felt before. And so I wanted to thank all you. And my brother, he hurt my feelings. And I, and I told him he had been jealous of me all my life. <clears throat> I told him, I said, what do you think about this? He says, you're going to do I says, yeah, I got to tell everybody. He says, no, what you tell everybody is my name is Gloria and I'm an alcoholic and I'm 30 days sober and thank you. Jealousy, that jealousy will kill you every time. When that's what I told him. I said, that jealousy is too much. But I began to pray. I began to pray. I began to uh, understand prayer and meditation. I began to just sit still and be comfortable. And most of the time, uh, where I felt like a scream looking for a mouth, uh, I started to feel comfortable. 
Uh, I'm only, I only feel that way when I get high anxiety, like uh, when I have to speak. Teresa called me uh, um, a month ago, a month ago. This has been a month. I've been waiting for a month, right? And so I've been <laughs> wanting to scream ever since. But anyway, uh, got through prayer, uh, started with the prayer and meditation on a regular basis. And uh, I didn't go into the uh, prayers of my grandmother, uh, prayers of my grandfather. I went in with simply, God help me today. Help me to be a better person. The book talks about uh, it at the st at the eleventh step upon uh, awakening or, or at, at the uh, upon awakening um, th that I be divorced from self pity and, and different things like that. And every day I don't get up and say it, but every day I get up and think it. And I believe that the pr God that I uh, believe in can read my heart. They told me when I was uh, something I remembered as a child. They said you don't even have to speak. Uh, God knows what you're what's in your heart. You, all you have to do is moan or groan. He can hear you. And so uh, those, were the, those are the things that I do most of the time. Uh, most of the time I get up and I, I, uh, I, I read the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous and then I turn to the big, big book and I will read something out of that. But I realized that I did not enjoy reading that much unless I'm with my sponsor because she's got this beautiful way of reading. Uh, so I turn the Bible on and I listen to it. I listen to it in the morning before I get in my car. When I get in my car, I have an hour to work and I have nothing but uh, gospel music on because it makes me feel comfortable. Anything else makes me um, makes me crazy. And I got some people to uh, to tell you, I got a, I got in a, a car with my sponsor and some other people at a, another conference and they were playing rap and uh, the, the song said something about, you don't know me, you know, and I, I could just feel how angry, you don't know me, right? I got out of the car, we went to the restaurant, the lady was asking us, I told her, you don't know me, you know, so I gotta be careful what I listen to. Uh, it's either gotta be some smooth jazz or some gospel music or country music. Uh, and, uh, but I, I tell you, uh, you know, I had to learn uh, to get into prayer and meditation. I had to learn that uh, so many different ways for me to pray. Sometimes it's a two-way prayer. Sometimes I write it down and I wait for the answer. Sometimes I call you and you pray for me, but the prayer is everyday part of my life. And, and you know, it, 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 it tells me that we need, we need, we need not be, uh, uh, you know, afraid of it or, or, or something that's, you know, not gonna happen because, it, you know, uh, Eventually it will happen, it will happen with a, with a vengeance, you know, you will just be doing this. So we need not uh, shy away uh, from it. We just need to get in touch with a power that's much greater than ourselves in order to, to have it. Uh, uh, and and uh, the way I started to really believe in it is one day I was sitting out at, outside of my house and I looked and I had seen this somewhere before, but I saw the grass coming through concrete. And that, that just amazed me. It just amazed me. And I thought, I wonder how that happens, right? And then I, re I remember sitting out at night and the star, there was a bright moon and uh, the stars. And then I went back to something in uh, the Bible that says that, where were you when I hung the stars in the moon? And I realized that I hadn't done it, that there was a power much greater than myself, right? I, I didn't know about uh, prayer uh, a, a lot. I didn't know how to put it all together. I had always put uniformed prayers together, uh, you know, religious prayers together, you know. Uh, and, and and I told you my people was uh, was uh, in the church. Did I tell you that they were Southern Baptists? Okay, so you know I didn't have to recover from us. I, I had to recover from that. I had to recover from that because they go, they go. They call and don't get into, I got into another denomination and, and, I, and I like, Lord have mercy, what, what's going on here? You know, um, and, and so what I realized being in touch with God, uh, prayer, you know, seeking through prayer and meditation makes me comfortable for the most part. And if in order for me to be comfortable, I have to seek God through prayer and meditation that improves my conscious contact with God. 
And for the most part, I do that through the prayer and the meditation, listening to the word of God. I have some other books, uh, The Language of the Heart. I really love that because it was about the codependent, right? And that was me. And I didn't even know it. You know, there's so much you don't know when you get here. Isn't that something? And there's so much you think you know. You know, so, you know, uh, one of the things they say, they just say, lay aside everything you think you know. And I'm like, how dare these sacrilegious demons from hell ask me to lay aside what I think I know. Now, I might not know too much about staying sober, but I know all about God. I just told you I wasn't well. I know about God. I didn't know God for myself. So I'm going to tell you, there's so many things that have happened to me uh, as a result of praying, uh, 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 seeking a conscious contact with God is that I became, became comfortable. Some things have happened to me, stone cold sober, uh, that I was able to deal with. I don't have to get in the cups no matter what. Uh, the most... Uh, I've had a, a couple of sons. I've had uh, my son shot, uh, uh, shot in the back uh, three or four times. Uh, I didn't drink because I started to pray and he's up walking and doing everything that he needed to do and needs to do today. Uh, prayer brought my children through a lifestyle that no mother wants their children involved in. All I did was pray, scared to death that something was going to happen, but I kept praying and I kept, I stayed sober with this conscious contact standing in between me because the book tells me that there's going to come a time when you don't have an effective mental defense against the first one, except in a few rare cases that must come from a higher power. I have that higher power in my life. Two years ago, another son got 75 to life. Through prayer and meditation, I was able to sit up in that courtroom to support my child. Through prayer and meditation, a month ago, I knew that when my son died, I would be going to get him from prison. Prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with God, I've been praying. I got a call from my son two weeks ago that through an appeal, 45 of those years have been knocked off. There's another appeal coming. Uh, and even if that one doesn't, if he doesn't win that one, my son will not die in prison. One day he'll be home. Through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with God, I'm a better grandmother. I'm a better friend to you. I'm a better member of this fellowship through the conscious contact that I have with God. My grandmother used to tell me I was gonna knock the bottom out of hell. I was wild, I was her only granddaughter. I, I, had, I had nine brothers and I am the daughter and granddaughter from hell. When I tell you from hell, from hell, and, 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 and that's what she would say. She says, you are the devil's doll, baby. And I went out to prove her right. I went off to prove her right. But because I have a conscious contact with God and he saw better, everything that I thought wasn't good. So when they told me to lay aside everything I think I knew about God, the program worked. See, the program was my God at first because my brother had been sober 10 years, so I knew it worked. So when I got into the program, I didn't really care. I, you know, step one, step two, you know, but came to believe in it, you know, made a decision to turn over. Oh, that was good. The inventory, no problem. I need to get all this shit off me, you know. I didn't have no problem. I didn't have no problem with no character. Well. I didn't have no character defects. That's why I told my first sponsor. She asked me, she said, what kind of character do you, do you, defects do you have? And I looked at me in the mirror, I'm like, I got no defects. What are you talking about? I said, you asked somebody else in the program, the girl with the raggedy shoes about some defects. I'm not defective. What are you talking about? You know, and I was a licensed hairdresser. So I always had my hair done. I always had some clothes. What do you mean defects? She said, are you a liar? I'm like, a little bit. 
She said, do you steal? I said, every now and then. I'm like, what's that got to do with anything? She said, don't you think that might be um, a character defect? I said, no, that's a lifestyle. That's just, I'm just surviving. What is you talking about? <laughs> then I told my brother, the other, the other crook in the fellowship, I told him, I said, can you imagine she want me to get rid of these defects of character? He said, yeah. And I'm like, well, what the hell? What kind of setup is this? And he said, well, one thing about it, um, you can get rid of them by not acting on them in seven, but you'll always have them. So in case you need to go back and get them, I like you, my kind of guy. But as a result of working this program, as a result of having a conscious contact with God, uh, I, went, I went along with this program. When I got into the 11th step, I felt like I was free. I wasn't walking. I wasn't no spiritual giant or, or nothing like that. Uh, but the love that I really have for people is really the love that I have. It's just that I don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm still afraid of people. I, and I think it's rejection. You know, I, you know, I want to make like, I want you to like me. Today, I'm just not consumed if you don't, but I really do. I don't know if people say, I don't care if nobody like, I really want people to like me, but I'm not consumed with the ones that don't. I'm consumed with the ones that do. And so I learned that through prayer and meditation. I learned through prayer and meditation that I am enough, that I, I, I'm okay, that I'm no better than anybody, that I'm just better than I used to be. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you're getting in touch with God, God will say some things to your heart. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not that spiritual where I get the, 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 you know, the sudden up evil where he's talking to me and I'm hearing, except for one time when I heard him say, this is not what I have for you. That was April 3rd. And I heard that audibly, but, you know, I was tripping too. So, you, you know, you know, you hear a whole lot of stuff when you're tripping, right? But it was enough for me to lay down and not pick up another one. Okay, um, and but getting in touch with this this conscious contact where you're walking around and all hell is breaking loose and you still going on because you know that God has got your back. See, having a conscious contact means that you got you know uh, and I, you know I don't want to be like you know He Man with no sword or nothing like or, or He Man. Why in the hell I get He Man? How about Wonder Woman? You know. Um, you know, uh, lasso and stuff, you know, I can fight some things off. It's just that I'm not worried anymore, but no matter what, you know, everything that has happened to me happened like you said it was going to happen. And you told me that uh, if I got a conscious contact with God, it would improve every aspect of my life. And it has, you know, I get a chance to, uh, let me tell you something about it conscious contact. Uh, uh, you, you heard Teresa uh, introduce me. Now, you know, I've, I've loved Teresa. I've, I've been to, went to England with Teresa. Teresa carried an awesome message. Everywhere she goes, she just carries an awesome message. I happen to be on that on that ticket. Poor little, you know, little lowly me. This is what I'm saying. God, I don't know how nobody asked me to go nowhere, right? And so uh, I remember sitting there at the table and she's, you know, she sees a whole lot of other stuff. Know about you if y'all don't know, right? And uh, so she was seeing everybody else's shit, but she looked over at me and I was just smiling. I like, God, please don't let her see nothing about me because I'm doing the right thing. But she never mentioned me. And she and I have always, and I thought to myself, oh, she didn't see all that shit she saw with them other ones, you know. Um, <laughs> now that's just me, that's just my personal thing. But getting on the phone with her, talking with her. And she and I do, we have some deep conversations. I mean, we go into some, I don't even know what we go into, but it's all so spiritual. It's all so wonderful. It's all so uplifting. It's also, you know, and just to hear her voice. And first of all, I say, I'm one of those, if you call me, I'm privileged that you call me. I don't think it's like, you know, I, you know, when I, I see the phone calls of some people, especially when some of the old timers check on me, I'm looking, I'm in amazement. I'm in amazement. But it's because of the conscious contact what I had that I have with God that I have a lot. I get a chance to share God with a lot of people, and a lot of times sharing God is just being on the other end of the line. You know, my conscious contact has been improved as a result of this program. I walk around and I feel, uh, for the most part, 
when that comes to me, a scream looking for a mouth, and I, and then and first thing I say is the devil is a lie. I'm always, if I'm feeling that way, it's because I had I need to sit down and write because I'm either high anxiety, there's some things going on, and all of a sudden I don't feel good enough. I don't know about a lot of you. I feel good most of the time, but there's those times that happen where I don't feel good enough. I don't feel that I deserve it. And I have to do some self-talking, do some prayer and meditation, um, do some two-way prayers, uh, writing and talking to God and waiting for uh, an answer. I don't know. I don't know uh, what you were supposed to hear tonight. I don't know. But I can tell you, that because of you uh, guiding me through the 12 steps that's outlined in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, because my sponsor did that for me, that uh, I, I, I have ceased fighting anything and anybody. And I have been on the tabletop in 21 years. 20, that's a long time not to get on the table when you used to being on the table or in the bed or falling down the steps. Oh, I guess I'm the only one, right? Uh, or in the back of the police car. Okay, uh, I'm just telling you, I just look like this. Let me take a drink, you'll see what happens. But because I got a conscious contact with God, I'm aware of what happened <laughs> and I don't have to do that no more. I don't have to do that no more. All I have to do is say, God, help me. Help me. You said you would be there. You said you would improve me if I improve my relationship with you. And that's what I did. Continue to pray and continue to meditate. I, I read every, any and everything. I don't have one particular book except for well, two, the big book and the Bible, but I don't have any, uh, three, the language of the heart. Oh, let me just stop lying to 12 and 12. Uh, but those are the main books that I read and uh, gospel music. But I love listening to the Bible. I love listening to the big book, if whether it's on CD or whether my sponsor is uh, reading to me. But that's how I hear because I can get a visual picture. I'm one of those people, I told you I was a hairdresser, I'm a, a visual person, I like to see the thing, then I can do it, then I can be it, then I can have it. Um, uh, and, and I had to see uh, God through the fellowship. I didn't see God through me, I saw him through the fellowship. And the stories that people were saying, they were just like me and I knew if they could get sober, that I could get sober. So that my first few years, the fellowship was, was, uh, was my God. Right. Until I really had to apply these things until these things really until the rubber meets the road. Let me tell you something. When the rubber meets the road and you get into some prayer and meditation. So you ain't want you can walk around and act like, a, you know, but let the rubber meet the road. When you didn't call everybody, you know how we call everybody first. Every spiritual guru that, you know. And they give you the same answer. You know that AA slang, have you talked to God? God, talk it, what is this? This answer that I get. So I like, okay, I'm not gonna call these people no more. I'm so sick of calling these people and getting the same thing. Let me just go to God myself. And that's how I, that's how, it, it, it's ever growing. Uh, being with God, being in love with God is ever growing for me. God is just a wonder. I cannot even explain to you you know, people want to explain God that, you know, he sits high and looks low. And I know he does all that. I have never seen him. I, I never talked to him. You know, uh, I, I, I haven't. I'm amazed that other people do. I can't, I don't speak in tongues. Uh, I don't hear nothing like that. I don't do. But I know that I have a contact with God. So when you are full of it, he says, mm -mm. and I'm like, oh, bless you, honey. You know, you know, you know, when people are full of it, you like, because, you know, sometimes you got these spiritual gurus, they walk in the meeting and they just float across the room. You're like, Jesus. But then the, the, and they, and as soon as they walk out the meeting, they slip on some water. I said, well, I thought you was floating. So 
I, I stopped looking at that and start looking in here. And here's where everything changed. Here's where every, my, my conscious contact was improved through my heart, through my thoughts, through everything that God is I want to be. When you see me, I want you to know that I am in the presence of God. So there's certain things I will not do, certain things I'm not going to do. You don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to act out in public because that does not represent the God that loves me, the God that snatched me out of those beds, that snatched me from those prisons, snatched me from the alcohol. So I can't do it. I, I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare make a mockery of God. Now, and he knows I'm nuts. That's the cold part about God. No, I'm nuts. Now y'all know it. So what? So what? But I'm good. I'm good. So, you know, I think my time is up. I want to tell you, thank you so much, Teresa, for allowing me to be here, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, I hope that I've shared something where somebody can see. I'm 65 years old. I started drinking and using uh, something at 13. I did not get sober till I was 44 years old. I'm a little slow, so what? Told you I was smart. I'm so smart, I'm a little slow. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that's most of our stories, right? Thank you for allowing me to be on this platform. Thank you for loving me until uh, I could love myself. Thank you for putting me back together. Thank you to my sponsor for introducing me to a God that is uh, much bigger than me that does sit high and look low. He had to look low. He had to come and get me. Cause you know, I paid a high price for a low bottom. With that, I thank you.